Hi everybody, this is Keith Carmona. Uh, I'm a writer with Scattered Comics and this is the start of a series of videos I'll be doing for Scattered Comics on how to write for comics. Um, and not sure exactly where you are as a writer, whether you're a beginner or a little bit experienced, uh, but these videos are designed to sort of take you through the whole process and if you are find yourself more experienced um, and some of the information is maybe a little repetitive, maybe you know some of this, then feel free to, to skip through some of these. So uh, we're going to start off with, again, assuming that you've never really written for comics or or maybe aren't sure how to to construct a plot outline. So this will be a, a real quick and, and pretty simple way um, how to take your idea uh, and plot it out for a comic. So. Um, you can do this pretty easily with a couple of different graphic ways to do this, and that's kind of how I used to do it um, early on. And so I'm gonna show you a couple of those ways how to do that. Um, the first graphic kind of looks like a, a check mark in a way. Uh, and it basically charts out some of the major uh, plot aspects of your book. Um, so what I've done here is I've created one called Fusion Farm. Uh, the Adventures of Chicken Bob and Johnny Goat. Um, and so the, there's no way this will ever really like make it into a comic, so I'm not worried about you stealing this idea or anything like that. So, um, but a blank sort of checkmark plot looks a little something like this. Okay. Oops. There we go. Like that. Um, and it's, it's just kind of a way to get yourself thinking about introducing a story, um, creating a crisis. So as you go through with a story, you're gonna have certain moments there where your your characters experience some kind of crisis. Uh, they they come up to obstacles and challenges and things like that. And your your checkmark plot graphic will sort of help give you a macrocosm view of your story. Um, so as the title says, it's you know uh, Fusion Farm: The Adventures of Chicken Bob and, and Johnny Goat. So the idea behind this is it takes place in Iowa and um, it's uh, a, a Cold War a warhead hasn't been dug up and it's it's leaking fusion, you know, radioactive material uh, uh, into a, a barn where we have Bob and his son Johnny are, are feeding the animals uh, and suddenly there's like a, a, you know, there's like a reaction um, as it uh, uh, inside the barn and uh, so all, all the other animals have died but um, the um, one of the chickens is fused with with Bob the father and uh, one of the goats is fused with um, Johnny so that's just kind of a, a basic premise as ridiculous as it is um, hey sometimes great stories start off with pretty ridiculous you know really out there kinds of ideas. So what we would do for our plot graphs, we'd start off with um, that premise. And so we would mark like maybe a, a small box there and we would put radioactive material leaks right there. Okay, so that's like the beginning, right? That's the first thing. It's like, oh my gosh, this is really bad. Uh, and so maybe up the top here because of that, and the next thing that I described, we have uh, Chicken Bob, CB, and Johnny Goat, JG, R, Born. Okay, so that's your first big thing right there. All right. Usually what follows after that is um, some falling action. So with this story, it's pretty ridiculous. Obviously, they're panicked about what they've become, and they're you know, looking around. They don't see that. It, the same is holds true if you're doing like even if you're plotting out like a serious drama thing, right? It, uh, your agents come to a crime scene. Uh, there's the initial shock of seeing the body. Um, and as they go around and and get evidence and talk to people and stuff like that, there's no real crisis happening there because um, it's been initially staged there. So usually what we have here is a little bit of falling action. And then, so here, that's indicated by this line right here going down. This one right here. Um, 
And so here, they maybe they you know kind of search around the barn, um, and you can mark it as as I've done here. Uh, everything is dead. Okay, so they're the only ones left in the barn here. All right. Um, well, what do they decide to do? Well, they kind of look around and maybe in the hay or something like that. Uh, their uh, chicken Bob's phone dropped out while he was you know metamorphosizing into this 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 you know half human half chicken creature right the phone has fallen out and he oh he finds it oh that's really cool okay well we can just calls for help okay so that's a good thing so finds phone so this is like an exciting point there right we're getting more action now um, but the problem is can't use it Right, because he's got you know chicken feet now, and and it just it's not reading his uh, what he's trying to punch in. Um, it recognizes his voice, right? But uh, you know, it's every time maybe he tries to speak, you know, you know, a little cackle comes out or something like that. Uh, and unfortunately, Johnny can't use it either. You know, it's not picking up um, when he's tapping it either. Um, so there's there's a bit of a crisis. So it's right. It's kind of funny and that sort of thing. But it's still, even though it's not intense, right? It is rising action. Wow, they're going to be able to get out of this, you know? And you're not sure. So we come up to um, sort of the conclusion here is because there's nothing alive in the barn, um, they can't use their phone. Well, you know what? They got legs, so they decide to wander around Iowa. And at this point, this is kind of falling action here, right? This is the very uh, end of your story, like right there. So they decide to wander around Iowa. So you start off with the, the main thing that happened here. Uh, then you have they're born, and then a little bit of falling action. They kind of wander, look around where they are, and everything is dead. And then you have a few points there. Um, the thing with these, though, is, and you've got the main story right there. Uh, the main thing, though, is you don't want to explain every single detail uh, in your graph here. You want it real simple, real cut and dry, so you can, uh, you know, sh you know, show it to potential artists or potential publishers uh, if they're interested in seeing that. This is mostly for your own purposes, though, um, as as part of just again a very basic preliminary. Um, sketch of your story for in this case it's going to be issue one for the first one okay um, this might be you know kind of a mini comic you might have a few other comedic moments in there as they try to try to utilize some of the things try to get used to the fact that they're now half chicken and half goat uh, maybe they have little arguments between a father and son like you know father and sons tend to do um, uh, so you, those things you don't necessarily add into this graphic, but they, you, you know them and you're going to put them into a script when you get to that point. There's one other way of presenting this information, and it's kind of a zigzag format. And basically what I did was I took um, the, the check mark thing and I, and I did it in a, in a little bit of a different graphic, if you can see that here. Okay, so uh, we start with the radiation link and then we move over to their born and then back over here with can't use phone, uh, no one alive in the barn, um, and then they go ahead and wander Iowa, and TBC is to be continued. And the way this one works out is kind of a zigzag format, as you can see there. Um, you start with one idea, and usually goes to a crisis moment, and then that gets resolved, and then another crisis, and goes back and forth, um, to where they're, they're sort of uh, treated equally, if you will. Um, but the idea then for either of these, whether you use the check mark or the zigzag, is to get a general idea of your story. And again, it's mostly for your purposes. Um, once you put it down, um, you're probably not going to use it that, that often, but it's a way for you to get the ideas out of your head and turn it into uh, a graphic, especially for, for those of you out there who are more uh, visual learners, that kind of thing, like myself. I'm more of a visual learner. To have that graphic available really sort of crystallizes the larger uh, aspects of the story in your mind and gets them down on, out of your mind and gets, get them in onto paper. So 
Um, that's it for the first video. Um, the next one we're going to talk about uh, is characters. We're going to talk about major and minor characters um, and how to create characters that are believable. And we're going to talk a little bit more about um, crisis and desire. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, check out our other Scattered Comics videos and hope to see you soon. Thank you everybody for watching our video. Please check out these other cool videos you see on your screen. You can help Scattered Comics and its creators by going to the description below and purchasing any of our cool stuff. Give our video a like and don't forget to subscribe.